All right. Uh, I'm speaking, as you know, from uh, 2 Corinthians 4, from verse 7 all the way through to the end in verse 18. And Paul says in verse 7, we have a treasure. We already have a treasure. He's not speaking in the past tense. He's not speaking in the, he's speaking in the past tense. He's not speaking uh, only in the past tense, but he's also speaking in the present tense, which is an ongoing tense, an ongoing sense. We have it and we'll continue to have it. It's not something that's coming. Uh, he says, you have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power that you have may be of God and not of us. Praise God. And I just want to speak very quickly uh, from the subject. What you have is what you need. You're not waiting for it. You don't need for it to come. It doesn't have to come. What you have, praise God, is what you uh, what you need. What you have is what you need. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to sort out my video here. It doesn't seem to be working for some reason. But what you have is what you need. All right, let's do it like this. What you have is what you need. What you have is what you need. Praise God. Uh, you know, in uh, the, the Bible, in the Gospels, it's... Are unusual. Well, it's not, you know, it's kind of rare. There are very few uh, scriptures in the Bible where you will find, in, in the Gospels rather, where you will find that Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John uh, recounts the same stories. Uh, the Synoptic Gospels, which is, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are very similar, and so many of them have the same stories. Uh, but John is, you know, written maybe 20 or so years after. Uh, the last gospel, the, the last of the other three was written, and uh, and he takes a different slant. And and everybody, you know, all of them have a different perspective and a different view. And so while we have uh, Matthew, Matthew wants to portray Jesus, and he portrays Jesus as the King or as the Messiah who is to come, and he shows us that Jesus is the offspring of David. He is the root of Jesse. And Matthew, so he wants to show us that Christ is the Messiah. And so he writes from that perspective. Mark shows us uh, that Jesus is a servant of God. And he wants to show us that Jesus comes as a servant. And what he does is he showcases uh, the suffering Jesus because, because Mark wants to show us that Jesus suffered uh, in our place and he suffered uh, for us. Luke wants to show us that Jesus is the son of man, that he came down from heaven uh, as God. He came down from heaven, but he didn't come down as God. Praise God. He didn't come down as a demigod either. He didn't come down as half God and half man or anything like that. He came down as a man uh, because a man needed saving. And the only way for us to be saved was for Jesus to come down as man. Uh, John presents Jesus as the son of God. And so he says, listen, I want you to know that this is the God, the Son of God. That's why John, when he's writing in uh, John 1, he says, in the beginning was the Word, praise God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John says, uh, I want you to see him as God. And all together we get different viewpoints and perspectives of a similar story of their interactions with Jesus. But here we have in all the Gospels that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are speaking, and a very few, maybe 10 or so instances of, of all the time they've been with him, three or so years, that they share the same story. One of the time when they share the same story uh, is the, the recount of his crucifixion, his death, and his burial. Obviously, everybody has to share that uh, because that's the passion of the Christ, right? Or that's the reason why Jesus came 
uh, to die. You have to show his purpose and you have to show his passion. Uh, but the other time that we see them talking uh, uh, and relate, relaying the same story, all four gospel writers, is when they're talking about when Jesus did the miracle with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. I wonder if you remember that story. Jesus takes his disciples apart and he takes the he takes them apart and the multitude follows him and he goes up, uh, up you know up the mountain and they come with him and he's teaching and he's preaching uh, to them so late that it gets late into the evening. Praise God. So anybody complaining about you know things going long, you know Jesus would have a meeting and it would be so long that people would even be hungry and it would be so far that they couldn't even go outside. They didn't have a talk <laughs> shop. Praise God, right? <laughs> Amen. And he would go on for a while. And so he gets into the situation, uh, Sister Elsa, where the people find themselves in a need. You, you know, it's not a want. They have a need. And, and it's not a need. It's not that they didn't plan for it. It's not that they didn't uh, uh, it's not that they were on, you know, they were um, uh, delinquent. It's just that a need comes upon them. And, and I believe Jesus puts this, the Lord, the Holy Spirit puts uh, one, this story as one of the stories that all the gospel writers has to write about because God recognizes that every now and then all of us are going to run into a situation where a need comes upon us and, and, and takes us. It's, it's not that we're not prepared. It's not that we don't like to prepare. It's not that we're procrastinators. It's it's not that we're pro, it's not that we're not proactive. It's just the nature of the need. Sometimes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as hard as you try, here comes a need that runs upon you and just overtakes you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Sometimes you just get into a situation, a problem, as hard as you try, that the need just comes upon you and and it's a bad thing when a need comes upon you and you have no way out of your need. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you this afternoon, this morning. Mm -hmm. You have a need and, and the need just pops upon you and you can't get yourself out of this need. Here they are and they're with Jesus and suddenly everybody's hungry and he has no food to feed them. And, and God is showing us that, you know, every so often you will have a need, you know, you, and, and, you know, you plan for things, but you'll run into a situation where you want to help the kids with homework, for example, but, but you, but you have to work. There's something that needs to get done. You, you want to spend more time. Maybe you want to volunteer. Maybe you want to give your time doing something. Maybe you want to study, but, but you have to pay the bills and, and here are these needs and, and sometimes not a want, but a need. And sometimes a need, it, it becomes complicated because you are looking at one need and here comes another need and it complicates it and it compounds itself upon your other need. But God says, I want you, Matthew. I want you, Mark. I want you, Luke. I want you, John. All of you, you have to write about this need because I want my people to know that I understand that needs are there. Number one, number two, God says, I want you to show them not only do I know Know that there are needs, but I'm the God who can supply everything that you need. My God, even if you're in the desert, God says, I have you. Even if you're on the mountainside, God says, I have you. Even if you're far apart where every other supply is, God says, you don't need a, phys a physical supply. You need the God who can supply all your needs. God says, I've got you covered because not only do I know that you have a need, I know how to supply everything thing that you will ever need in this life. Amen. He says, Matthew, Amen. he says, Mark, he says, Luke, he says, John, in all your writings, in all your talking about the kingliness, in all your talking about my messianic properties, in all your writing about me as a servant or the suffering, when you're writing about me as a human, in my humanity or me in my divinity, I want you to write to my people and let them know that I am the God who will give you everything that you need. Can I just, can I just tell you this morning, if there something that you need, if there's something that is haunting you, if there's a need that is hounding you, you have got a God who's got you covered. Lord, help me. Amen. You have got a God who knows how to supply. You have got a God who knows how to provide. You have a God who knows how to supply everything that you need. And he is right here in our presence this morning.
Amen. Amen. Sometimes, mom, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we have, you know, God's got us covered, you know. And when we use the term covered, sometimes we, we think about insurance and, you know, we have this insurance policy. We have insurance policies and, you know, sometimes you have an insurance policy and you get the best of the best just in case uh, you run into a, a, an issue. You know, you have full coverage and, and there is always something that full coverage doesn't cover. You are not hearing what I'm saying to you. <laughs> yes. it, it, it covers yeah. everything but except one thing. You know, you have dental coverage, but it, it covers everything except the crown. And the crown is what you need right now. Y'all not, y'all not <laughs> hear what I'm saying to you. You have vision coverage and it covers everything except the lens that you need because their coverage is comprehensive in, in word, but not comprehensive in nature. But God says, I am the God who covers all of your needs. Yes. God's got me covered praise god Amen. Amen. Jesus. hallelujah god's got me covered and so he covers every need he says write about it john in all your writings matthew in all your writings mark in all all of you have to agree that i'm god hallelujah and i will give you what you need when you need it so god then knows that we have a need god knows who needs it? That's me and you. God knows what we need because we tell him all the time. And if we don't tell him all the time, he knows what we need even before we ask him for it. But even if we're not, even if he didn't know, Lord have mercy, you know that we're going to tell God that this is what I need. Sometimes we tell him multiple times for the day. Praise who? He knows the what. He knows the when. He knows the where. He knows even why we need it. But the <laughs> question that we always have, God, is how are you going to supply my needs? I know that you're God. I know that you can do it. And sometimes we look at our situations and I say, God, I know that you can, but I don't know how you're going to get me yes. out of this mess. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Yes. Amen. Yes. Paul Paul is talking in 2 Corinthians uh, 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 the, 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 4, and the theme that Paul is dealing with is, is not just the who, the what, the where, the why, but Paul is telling us that God is a God who knows how to deal with it. It's not just that he knows. He knows how to deliver. He knows how to set us free. He knows how to bring me out. My God, I wish I had uh, somebody who knows uh, who he knows how to make a way. He knows oh, how to open doors. He knows how to make my enemies uh, my footstool. Good God Almighty. He knows how to make them that who hated me be at peace with me. He knows how to bless me. He knows how to elevate me. He knows how to promote me. God is the God who knows how to deal with the issues in my life. And Paul is speaking and Paul is coming in and he's teaching us and Paul is saying to us, God doesn't just know who, he doesn't just know what. A lot of us, a lot of us can know all the problems that people are going through. Praise God. Sometimes we know other people's problems so intimately, but we just don't know how to help them out of the problem. Yeah. Or Paul says, listen, I, I, I'm going to go into this, but I want you to know that God is the God of how. Here, here is why the how is important. The how is important because even though the enemy knows that I can't get them from believing that God is God. So what I have to do is I have to trick them and trap them in the how. I, God, God won't always tell us, God will tell us what he will do, but he won't always tell us how he's going to do it. God will tell us that he's a healer, but he won't always tell us how he's going to heal us. God will tell us that he's a deliverer, but he won't always tell us that he's going to deliver us. And what the enemy realizes is that here is what I am going to do in between uh, when their faith believes and when the thing materializes, I'm going to work on them and I'm going to work on them in the how, because if I can trick them and get them to start to do the thing for themselves, then I can get God, I can get them to circumvent the plans and the purposes of God. 
Yes. Let, let me give you an let me let me give you an example. An example is God says, God says, let me see. I hope I'm not talking about anybody. I, I don't know anybody's business, but but God says, I'm going to give you this thing. Let me let me let me keep it generic then. God says, I'm going to give you this thing, Abraham. Let, yes, let me let me talk about Abraham. God says, Abraham, I'm going to give you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to give you this thing. And Abraham said, Yes, God, you're going to give me. His wife says, I know God is going to give me. I'm going to work on the how. Here is what you're going to do, Abraham. Go lie with my handmaiden and God is going to give us a child. Now, God says, I'm going to bless you with a child, but that's not how God wanted to bless them with a child. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying to you. Yeah. And so the enemy says, I can't stop what God is going to do. I can't stop uh, 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 who he's going to do it. I can't even stop where God is going to do it because God spoke. But what I can do is I can interfere. I can interrupt and I can mm-hmm. get them to try to help God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this afternoon? Yeah. This morning? Yes. yes. So he says, I'm going to get you to help God. And, uh, yeah. and, 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 and he messes with the how. Because he says, God doesn't always show us how. So mm-hmm. I can interrupt them. I, I, I can get them to get themselves in problems. I, I can get them to take on certain things that they shouldn't be taking on. Lord, help me. I, I can get them to go to places that they shouldn't be going. I can get them to rush ahead. I can get them to get ahead of God. And God is saying to us, just hold on. Just wait on me. Just trust in me. Mm-hmm. Don't try to do it because I am the God who knows how to deliver. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm going to preach in a minute. God is the God who knows how to get us out. God is the God who knows how to get us through. God is the God who knows how to keep us in the middle of a burning, uh, in the middle of the flames around us, in the middle of the storm. God knows how to keep us. Yes. Amen. Praise God. He knows how to do it, Sister Sharon, because, because you know, God, 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 even God knows how to do it. And God is saying, listen, I'm the abundant God. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I've Amen. got so many. I've got so many things that I've got so many ways. I, I won't even tell you how how I'm gonna do it because because when I get ready to do things, not I just screw you all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Uh, uh, you remember one time when when Jesus needed some money. Uh, if it was me, when I need money, here's what I do. When I need money, I I look in the bank account. When I when I need money, I don't have any money. I call mommy. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I call my sister. I call somebody. Whenever I need money, I go to somebody. Or or maybe I try a new endeavor. I invest somewhere and I try to get back some money. But Jesus says, I'm not doing that, church. Woo, God. Amen. Uh, uh, When the church needs money, we run a rally. We do some kind of raffle. We have a chicken dinner. Jesus says, I'm not doing that. He says, guys, go down to the seaside, okay? Go down to the seashore. Here's what I'm going to do. I, I need money money for my taxes. I I need you. I'm not hearing what I'm saying to you. I need money. Jesus says, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in a way that you've never seen it before. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. He says, the first fish that comes out, you're going to find some money in the mouth of the fish. Imagine that. Look at my Jesus. If it was us, we'd have come up with all kinds of schemes. But here's what God is telling you. I'm the God of the money. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm the God of all creation. And if anything that you need. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I know how to get things to you when you need it. Lord, help me. Yes. Yes. Amen. And and so God says, I am the God of the how. The need is there, but but don't worry about the how. I know how I'm going to bring you out. I know how I'm going to bring you through. And that's why when you start to get to this uh, situation in your life, you got, you start to get to a stage in your life when you start to say, when you really realize that God is the God of the how. Uh, Listen to me, Uh, sister, um, uh, uh, sister Gloria, you start to say, I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. Y'all, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Amen. You start Amen. to say things like, I know that he's the God who makes a way. I don't know how my way is going to be made, but I know my God is going to make a way. I'll tell you something, because I know he can bring me out. He brought them out of Egypt, and when he brought them out of Egypt, he parted the waters before they went through. Then he 
brought them into the promised land uh, and he brought them in. Uh, they had to step in the water before the water would part. You're not hearing what I'm saying yeah. to you. And what God is saying is, don't worry about your feet getting wet. Uh, just, mm -hmm. just, just, just give me glory as you're going through. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether your feet get wet or whether your feet remain dry, uh, I am going to bring you through. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. Amen. Oh yes. my God. Oh my God. Yes. My feet might get wet. My feet might stay dry. But whether I'm wet or I'm dry, I'm coming out on the other side. You're not Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. My God, I wish I could preach Amen. <laughs> this morning. Yes. I'm coming out. I'm coming out better. I'm, I'm coming not... out stronger. No matter yes. how I get through it, I'm getting through it. And you know, you start to say something like, anyhow you want to bless me, God. Woo, Jesus. Yes. Anyhow you want to take me out, God. And how you want to deliver me, God, because I know you're the God of the how. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. You see, when, when God says something, it must come to pass. It doesn't matter how, it must come to pass. Amen. That, that, that's why when, when Jesus was raising people from the dead, he, he never did it one way. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying to you. Uh, uh, some, sometimes he said, daughter, one time he said, you remember Jairus' daughter? When he was talking to Jairus' daughter and the people were laughing him to scorn and they said, she's dead. He says, no, he's, she's sleeping. And they laughed at my Jesus. Uh, but my Jesus uh, looked at the damsel uh, and, said, uh, and said, daughter, uh, 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 right. Rise, uh, and he took her up uh, and that young girl had to raise up from the dead uh, because the master was speaking. Uh, mm. Number two, uh, he spoke to Lazarus. Uh, he never said Lazarus arise. Uh, he said Lazarus come forth uh, and Lazarus <laughs> had to come forth. Uh, grave uh, clothes and everything. Uh, Bound and everything, uh, but he had to come forth uh, because the Amen. master was speaking. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying Amen. to you. And when Jesus got tired of speaking, uh, one time he just walked by the coffin. Uh, you remember the widow woman uh, who had one son? Uh, he said, you're going to yeah. get raised today, uh, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to speak to you. He just looked at the coffin and touched the coffin. Uh, and the young yeah. man got up out of that coffin uh, because the master was working. Uh, and what the master yes. is saying, uh, don't worry about the how. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, when I speak mm. it, uh, it's coming to pass. Uh, if, uh, uh, if, uh, if anything that is there that needs to get resolved, uh, if anything that is there that needs to get addressed, uh, it mm. must get addressed because the master Amen. has spoken it. Amen. Oh, my God. Paul is talking about the how, and he says when God decided to deal with us, what God did was he used a term, he used a concept, he used a principle, and he says he calls it a treasure. You know, you know, uh, uh, it's important not to worry about uh, uh, about the how, but have to trust uh, trust in God because even the Bible says Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. And, and Abraham, when God said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a blessing. Abraham, the Bible says he didn't think about how he just believed God. You know, you yeah. can get righteous just, be, just by believing believe God. Me. You can be yeah. considered blessed by God just yeah. by believing God. You're not hearing what I'm yes. saying to you. Yeah. I, I, I am saved just by believing God and I'm righteous just by believing God. I am blessed because I believe what God said. You're not, you're not hearing what I'm yeah. saying to you. Yeah. And Paul yeah. said, we have believed uh, and so we have spoken uh, and we have spoken up uh, to because we have believed you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I don't know how, but I believe. God help me. I don't know when, but I believe. I don't know where, but I believe. I don't even know who it's going to come through, but I believe God. And I'm opening up my mouth and I'm saying it because I believe God. I'm coming through because I believe God. I'm coming out because I'm believing God. My head will be head high because I believe God He's a lifter of my head. I believe God. I'll see you all later. He's my 
deliverer. I believe God. I'm healed and I'm whole because I believe God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus even today because I believe God. Come here, yeah. somebody. Are you hearing me this afternoon? Amen. God is speaking, Sister Mark, and he's speaking through Paul, and he says, this is how I'm going to bless you. This is how I'm going to deliver you. This is how I'm going to bring you out. This is how I'm going to show you, oh God, mm. that I that you're mine uh, and that mm. I have called you. He says, watch mm. this. Uh, I'm going to put a treasure inside of you. And Paul mm. said, uh, we have this treasure in earthen mm. vessels. Uh, he says the mm. word that he uses there is the word deposited. Uh, oh, my God. Can somebody say deposit? Deposit. 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 Sister Lisa, he says, God gave me a deposit. You know, when I came mm -hmm. to Canada first, when I came to Canada first, mom in Jamaica, she used to send us to the bank in Jamaica. <laughs> and in, in the bank in Jamaica, she used to say, go and lodge some money for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and when I came to Canada, Sister Elsa, I went to the bank over here. Now I'm my own man. And I go to the, to the bank to do a deposit. And I didn't know that they don't know what lodging something is. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the lady and I said, I need to lodge some money. And she said, excuse me, what do you mean by that? I said, need to lodge some money. I have some money. I need to lodge it. And she thought for a second and she said, oh, do you mean you want to do a deposit? I said, yes, I have some money. I need to put it into my account. But here is what God said. God said, I have made a deposit inside of your account. Y'all not hearing what Amen. I'm saying to you. He said, and the deposit that I put in your account is a treasure. It is valuable people of God. Amen. Amen. A, a, a treasure Amen. is something that is worth something to somebody. A, a treasure is something that is valuable. A treasure is something that you will protect. A, a treasure is something that you will safeguard. A, a treasure is something that you don't give to anybody and anybody. A treasure is something that you keep secured. And here is what God said. Lord, you are not catching me this afternoon. God said, I have given you my best. I have given you my treasures. I have given you something that not just valuable, but it is valuable to me, God. Can I talk to you this afternoon? And God said, I deposited it. I placed it inside of you, inside of the earth and vessels that you're walking around in. God said, I put something inside of you that is valuable. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we need to start looking at ourselves in the mirror and looking part by past this flesh of and looking at the value that God sees. Uh, You're not hearing what I'm saying Amen. to you. Sometimes people will put you down uh, because your eye is smaller, your nose is bigger, or your teeth mm -hmm. are crooked. Uh, and God said, don't look at the earth and vessels. Uh, there's mm -hmm. value in the vessels. Uh, I wish I could yeah, talk to you. Yeah. But I'm starting to look at myself uh, as valuable, as a treasure of God. Uh, You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Amen. I am uh, a treasure of heaven. Uh, you are not hearing what I'm saying to you because Amen. a deposit was made in my account. Amen. Incidentally, Amen. this is why the enemy hates you so much. Yes. Amen. Incidentally, yes. the reason yes. why the enemy hates the church, the children of God so much <clears throat> is because of the treasure that's inside of you. Man. And the treasure, Sister Gloria, the enemy realizes that God chose oh, to put the treasure that. inside of you. That's right. Watch this. He didn't put it in a principality. Y'all not hearing me. Yes. He didn't put it in a power. He didn't put it in the angels. He never put it in anywhere else. He says the treasure, the deposit of God help me is going inside of you. Yes. Yes, amen. I have a treasure 
in a vessel that's earthen. And you might not look how I you like how I look. <laughs> you might not like how I sound. You oh, might not yeah. like uh, uh, very many things. My knees might be knocked or my too might be too short for you or too tall for you or too slim for you or too fat mm -hmm. for you or too whatever for you. But I tell you something, there is a treasure on the inside of me that's worth mm -hmm. more than any money, than anybody. Y'all mm -hmm. not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Talk, talking yeah. about billionaire and talking about net worth and talking yeah. about your value. And, you know, one time yeah. somebody looked at me and, and they said to me, and they said to me, you know, I'm worth a million now. I said, great. That's wonderful. I'm great. I'm happy for you. But I tell you something, a million dollars, ladies and gentlemen, is not enough to express the value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not hearing what I'm saying. Yes. 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 That you yes. have inside of you. And maybe, but maybe the reason, maybe the reason some people don't understand is that, you know, sometimes we don't realize what is inside of us. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we don't realize what is inside of us. Let me move on. Sometimes we don't realize our worth. Sometimes we don't realize what God has placed on the inside. And so God says, that's all right. I'm going to show you what you're worth. I'm going to show you what your value is. I'm going to show you how much you have inside of you. The power, the excellency of the power yeah. that's on the inside of you. And God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you by recognizing the need that you have in your life and then using what I've put on the inside to supply the need that you have. You know, <clears throat> there is this term that says, there's a term that says necessity is the mother of invention. You ever heard that term? Yes. Necessity is the mother of invention. invention. And what they're saying is that you don't know that you can do something until you're getting problems. <laughs> let, 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 let me say, let me say, let me say Caribbean. Let me say Jamaican. You, you know, when, when, when trouble take you, y'all not hearing what yes, I'm saying yes, to you. Yes, yes, When trouble <laughs> take you, <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you ever got, got into a trouble. You, you know, maybe, maybe you were in a situation and, and you had to run. And when you heard the situation, I mean, you're not jogging. I mean, you had to tear out of there. Yes. And when you start to run, and when you finish run, and you got out of the, the situation, you look back at yourself, and you didn't know that you could run so fast. God help me. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, but you yes. didn't know that you could get yourself out of that situation. You didn't know that you had that inside of you. Why yes. is that so strong in you? Because the need that you had to take care of yourself, the need that you had to save, you, to save yourself, the need that you had to get out of that situation pushes you it causes you to rise to an occasion and to a level that you did not know that you had on the inside yeah. and god is saying whenever you have a need on the inside i'm going to deliver you i'm going to get you out but god says the treasure that you need the power that you need you're not hearing what i'm saying to you yeah. it's on the inside the excellency is on the inside i placed it already on the inside of you and you're coming out of this situation don't look to tom don't look to dicker don't look to harry i placed it on the inside of you amen a lot of the, a lot of the major inventions a lot of the major inventions came out yes. of necessity we're using yeah. something called GPS in our cars. We're using global positioning systems that are a constellation of satellites that uh, give uh, a precise, sometimes to the meter, sometimes down to the centimeter, uh, a precise yeah. location of where you are on the face of the earth, latitude and longitude. And we can tell where something is. Uh, you can find your phone, uh, you can find your bag, you can find your child, whatever it is. You 
can map them out. Yeah. People are tracking yeah. people, even stalking people with GPS yeah. systems. Uh, GPS systems give us turn by turn direction. Uh, I can get to your house, Sister Elsa. I don't need to know the turn by turn. I put in your address in my phone, know where to get to. What about if I was driving further? Listen, I could drive to Florida. I don't need to to print out a map, I put it in my GPS system and it takes me there. And how did I get a GPS system? It was invented by the US Navy who wanted to be able to know where their soldiers are. They needed to defend themselves and they needed to be able to pinpoint the enemy so they could take the enemy out. GPS systems that we use as comfort and convenience today was invented as a means of necessity to defend themselves. Uh, oh God, what about the World Wide Web uh, or what we call the internet today? The internet, it was a project called DARPANET that was invented by the US military. The armies needed a means and a method uh, of communicating uh, that was network based, uh, which means if you cut one of the uh, means of communication because it was a web or a network, one network, one uh, node could go down in the network, but they still could get their method, they still could get their communications across to the yeah. other end because it was a web. One node goes down, I still have a web. Now we have the world wide web that was made out of necessity. Most of the inventions that we have a lot of the inventions came out of wartime, out of needs, uh, out of struggles, uh, out of problems, Lord help me, out of pain. Uh, here we have millionaires and multimillionaires and billionaires that are driving the economy and pushing the world forward on the world wide web. Uh, now you're talking on WhatsApp and sending messages all over back home and all over the place. Uh, and it doesn't cost you a cent uh, apart from your internet uh, because of the world wide web. Uh, but it was driven out of need. Uh, it was driven out of necessity. And if you have a need today, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. God is saying there's something on the inside. There's something that I placed inside of you. There is something that I put in you. God is saying work it. God is saying pressure it. God is saying put a demand on it because the treasure, the Power, the deliverance, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you, yeah. is already on the inside. Inside, <laughs> amen. Inside. So when so when I have a so when I have a problem issue, when I have a pain, when I have a situation, when I have a struggle, when I have a fight, God said, Why are you all crying uh, uh, to me? Don't you know your power on the inside? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. When I'm going through problems, uh, when I don't know where to turn, uh, I don't have to turn to you anymore, uh, or you anymore, uh, or this one anymore. Uh, I go on the inside, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I have a friend, uh, I have help uh, on the inside uh, and something, uh, anything, uh, whatever I need, uh, I look on the inward man, uh, I look inside uh, because greater is he that is within me. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And he that is in the world. And so he says it's on the inside. Whenever you have a need, we, we have needs. And, and so we are fighting for, we are fighting the needs. We're praying away the needs. Hallelujah. No oh, glory to God. <laughs> we have these problems and we're praying away the problems and we're stopping them and we're blocking them. And in, in certain cases, God says, welcome that problem. <laughs> He says, yeah. welcome it because this is your next level right here in the form of a problem. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Amen. Sister Elsa, God is saying, here is your next dimension. Mm -hmm. Here is your next move. Mm -hmm. Here is yeah. your open door in the midst of this problem. It, it looks like a problem. It looks like pain. It looks like pressure that's taking you. Mm -hmm. but, but God says, it's your next move. It's your open door. Yes. And so, and so, Sister Sharon said, "I I thank God for the mountains, Truth. and I yes. thank Him for the valleys, and I 
Yes, thank you, thank Jesus. him for the things he brought me through. Yeah. Yeah, if man. I never had a problem, I didn't know that my God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in his yeah. world can do. Yeah. I, I, and so God says, your next door, your next level, your next opening, your next opportunity Hallelujah. is not just an open door, is not just oh. what you think is favor. He says favor comes in pain uh, sometimes, sometimes Problems look like problems, but it's a stepping stone to take you into yeah. the next power, dimension of power that I have for you. Amen. Amen. So Paul Amen. says the problems and the pains are there. They're not going to go away. They're not going to uh, go no. away. But he says, uh, don't look at them as problems. He says, that's why Paul says they are light afflictions. Mm -hmm. He says there are light afflictions. I said, Paul, don't you know the hell that we're going through down here in this life? He says that's a light affliction. Uh, God, you know, Paul, you, you, can, you can just imagine arguing with the Holy Ghost and saying, uh, Holy Ghost, we're living through a pandemic. And every time it looks like we're getting a grasp. A hand on this thing. Uh, every time it looks like we're 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 getting ahead of it. Every time uh, it looks like the vaccination might work, or 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 the uh, you know the policies are working. Every time it looks like we can open up and and return to normal. Here here comes a new variant and it shuts us down and and it causes people to uh, to go back inside and 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 not only that, Paul, people are dying. But 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 Paul says it's a light affliction. You know, hearing what I'm saying to you. The NIV says it's temporary. It's but for a moment. But he says, don't look at the moment. He says, it's working for you. A far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And you know something, what the Bible is telling me, that this problem that you're going through when you come out on the other side of this you're coming out stronger when you come out on the other side of this you're coming out better you're coming out mighty you're coming out with a mighty hand because if there was not a problem there would not be a solution and so he says the need is there but my god is gonna bring me out and build me up while he's bringing me out of the need Amen. That I'm going Amen. through it. That I'm going through. I'm I'm going through it, but I'm I'm gonna be built up. I'm going through it, but I'm not gonna be taken down. Uh, going through the storm, Sister Lisa. I mm. sang it, but I won't go down. Uh, I hear His voice Amen. calling me Amen. in the rhythm of the winds, uh, and He's calling me out. Uh, so Paul said, uh, "It's a light affliction," uh, and he said, "Yes, uh, there is some pain. Uh, there is some pain in it," uh, but he said, "You can have." Have trouble, but you won't be distressed. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Man. Is there anybody out there? Uh, you look at your life and you say, I went through hell, uh, Pastor. I went through certain things. Uh, and now when I look at what I went through uh, and where I am now, uh, I look at what I went through uh, and what I where, where I am now. Uh, I don't know how I made it, uh, but I was yeah. troubled, uh, but not distressed. Uh, mm. I was perplexed, uh, but I was not in despair. Uh, I was persecuted. Uh, good God Almighty, I'm talking to somebody. Maybe I'm yeah. talking to myself, uh, but I'm not forsaken. Uh, I'm cast down, uh, but can never be destroyed uh, because the Lord God uh, on the inside uh, was holding me. Uh, he was keeping me. Uh, this treasure Amen. in this vessel is carrying me through my problem. Amen. Amen. Come here, somebody. Come here, somebody. I was shielded. I went through fire but it didn't burn me i mm -hmm. went through water but it didn't overflow me i went through the valley but god carried me i was on the mountain i had to climb uh, to get there but he helped me up on the mountain uh, my god was with me uh, through it all uh, and that's why i don't understand how people go through life uh, without god life god. is hard yeah. enough uh, by itself uh, but you need a friend uh, if you need a friend his name uh, is jesus god help me and he can carry you through uh, he can hold you. Won't he hold you? Y'all not hearing me. Amen. Will he not carry you? Will he not cover you? Will he not shield you? Praise God. Mm -hmm. That's the Lord. David said, David said, Amen. many mm, there be that trouble me. 
Many there be that rise up against, against me. me. Many there be that say of my soul, because people will look at you and they'll look at your soul. And, and David said, there is no, they said, there is no help for him in God. Him in Praise God. God. Yeah. But, 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 but David said, thou, but, but thou, Lord. Woo. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. shield unto me. Anybody know that book, Brooklyn Tab song, Tabernacle song? Uh, my glory. And the lifter of my head. And I, I cried yeah. unto the Lord with voice, and he and he heard me. Woo! And he lived out, of, out of his oh. holy hill. I, I lay me down, he said, I, after all of this. And I slept. Yes. And I awake. Man. Because the Lord sustained me in the midst of the problems I'm sleeping. <laughs> in the oh, midst of the pain I'm sleeping. In the midst of a soul mm. running after me, I'm sleeping because God shielded me. I'm troubled, but I'm not distressed. Mm. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. Mm. I'm per persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Mm. You know, God. you know, you need to look at yourself sometimes and look in the mirror and say, and just read it, read Second Corinthians 4, 8 and say, you know, you know, sister so-and-so, you know, sister Maudlin, you're, you're troubled, you have some trouble, but, 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 but give God thanks because you're not distressed, you're not hearing me. Yes. You, you know, you, you, you might be perplexed, you might be wondering, but, but you're yes. not in despair. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. There might be some persecutions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm. but, but, but you're not forsaken. I'm not mm. forsaken. Thou hast mm. not forsaken me. Amen. But Amen. cast down. Mm. And David said, why art thou cast down? Mm. <laughs> oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And why art thou disquieted within me? Why are within me? Because Hoping. I might be cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Hope thou oh, in, God. in the Lord. Praise God. So number Amen. one, Paul says, you have this treasure inside of you. This treasure inside of you it keeps you. It guides Amen. you. It directs you. It protects you. Causes mm -hmm. God, calls you to call on the name of the Lord. Praise mm -hmm. God. You you won't you won't ever have a brass heaven over you. Praise God. You won't mm -hmm. ever have a closed heaven over you because mm -hmm. of the power, the treasure on the inside. You can always reach God. Praise God. You don't have to cry, cut yourself, weep. You can always just go on the inside. He mm -hmm. says there's power on the inside that's keeping you. Glory be to God. And sometimes the power just comes in a whisper. You know, we're we're talking about how we do it. And whenever I talk about it often, you know, Elijah was looking for God and, he, and, he, and, and there was an earthquake and a storm and God never came in it. Sometimes mm -hmm. God will, the power just comes in a whisper in your spirit that says, uh, that, that says, I'm with you. Glory be to God. And that one yeah. word that can keep you right through a yeah. terrible situation, through yes. months Amen. and months and months of pain, God just comes in. He doesn't move the pain. He just says, I'm with your sister. Yes. God help yes. me. He just yes. says, I'm here for you. He just says, I'm holding your hand. He says, yes. I'll never leave you. Yes. And just one word in a whisper on yes. the inside of my soul that says, I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's with me. Do him do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Number one, he will do it. Number two, I need you to recognize that the power on the inside, it's yours. It is yours. Mm -hmm. It belongs to you. It is yours. Amen. It is not going to be yours. It is not something that I have to earn or work for or pay for to be mine. It belongs to me. Praise the name of the Lord God. It is a Amen. done deal. I don't need to wait for it. I don't need to tarry for it. It is Amen. already mine. It belongs to me. Are you Amen. hearing what I'm Amen. saying to you? Uh, God, Paul says uh, uh, this thing belongs to me. God Amen. gave it to me. And even like you wanted to make the point in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one, 22. Paul says it like this. He says, God has sealed us. Mm. I look at a word. He says he has given us the earnest. Somebody say earnest. Earnest. He has given us the earnest. Y'all know what the earnest is. The earnest is the deposit. <laughs> the earnest is the down payment. God says, I, I, I'm going to seal you with the deposit and the down payment and the earnest called the Holy Ghost on the inside. Amen. Amen. He says, I've already given it to you. It's already yours. Amen. And so then he says, everything that you're going through is for you. 
Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15. All things now all are for your sakes. Mm -hmm. All for your all for your sakes. Speaking. All for your sake. You see, I, I need you to understand what this means. He says, mm -hmm. all things are for your sakes. You, you see, Sister um, sister Sharon, sometimes we, we want to hear a good news. We want to hear a blessing. We want somebody to call us and say, you want this. I'm going to do this for you. We want the reward. We want the award and we want the good news. But, but Paul says, even the bad things are for your sakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even the things that we don't want. He says, all things. Things are for your sake. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Praise God. The thing that I lost, the thing that got out of my life, the thing that was taken away, the thing that I desired so much, God said, that thing is for your sake. Come here, somebody. Yeah. The thing that I was crying about, the thing that I had pain, God says, that is for my sake. Because I heard him when he said, all things work together. Come here, somebody. For the good of them that love the Lord and are called all for my for his purpose uh, and i know yeah. that i love my jesus uh, and my jesus loves me uh, okay. so whatever is lost uh, whatever is a pain mm. whatever is a problem uh, whatever mm. is an issue whatever is a heartache uh, in the good times uh, or in the bad times uh, it is for my sake uh, it is for my good uh, it mm. is working for me uh, are you hearing what i'm saying to you mm. the yeah. enemy might mean it for evil but god says i'm gonna make it work for your good that's right all things are for your sake praise god the storm uh is for your sake as much as the goods for your sake are you hearing what i'm saying to you the promotion is for your sake as much as they ignore you it is for your sake all things amen amen not so much amen. all things are for your sake. Jesus Sick. was trying to explain the situation. I, I know it's a tough point. Jesus, oh, just one more point and I'm done. Jesus was explaining the situation and Jesus wanted to explain it uh, because, because, you know, Martha, when he went to Martha and he went to Martha and, and Mary and he loved them. And Martha said to Jesus, Jesus, if you only had been here, I wouldn't have gone through this hell. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> if you had been here, Jesus, I, I we wouldn't be crying today. If you had been here, Jesus, if you had prevented this thing, Jesus, if you had stopped it before it happened, Jesus, if you had not made me go through what I made, what you made me go through, if you if you had just come here a little bit earlier, have you ever looked at your life and you, and you say, if I if I had only not gone there, if I had only not opened the door, if I had only not answered the call if i had only not done 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 this thing if i why did i even answer them i i would not have been in this situation and mary martha looked at jesus and said jesus uh, if only you had been here but jesus says your brother shall live again she said yes i understand the scriptures i know what the scriptures say you know sometimes we look at the scriptures and we look at our situations and we say i know what the scripture says but jesus Jesus says, you know the water, but you don't know the how, baby. You are not hearing what I'm saying to you. She says, I know you're going to raise them up in the last day. Jesus says, I am the last day. I am the resurrection. I am the light. I want to show you that this thing is going to work for your good. I want to show you that this is for the glory of God. I want to show you that all the things that the enemy had been alive allowed to do uh, it's gonna turn around uh, you're not hearing what i'm saying to you mm -hmm. oh god uh, it's turning around uh, it's turning around uh, it's turning around now uh, my you're not god help me my life is starting to turn uh, my life is turning around uh, my story is turning around uh, it is turning in my favor it is turning for my good uh, because all things uh, she said uh, Jesus in the last day, uh, Jesus says right now, uh, it's turning baby, and he called Lazarus, uh, and he said, Lazarus, uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you, come forth, uh, and so he's calling uh, your victory, your destiny, he's calling it out of the grave, Woo! Amen. Amen. life turn around, life change, life 
Mm. come to fruition it's working for your glory i don't care how bad it is sorry it's working for your good the glory belongs to god it's working for his glory it's working for my good good mm. mary martha they said last day it's gonna happen i'm almost done one thing it's yours number two it's accessible number one it's yours number two it's accessible it's there right now you don't have to, you know, there are certain times when you have certain things and you have certain things and you can't get it. You know, mommy says, this is yours, you know, but you know, you're going to get it when you die, when I die, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, but I don't want you to die, you know, you know, uh, you know, but, but it's yours anyway, praise God, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get it. it. It's not accessible. It's I, I have to die first and, and, and you don't want to, you don't want the person to die. So you say, keep it, you know, keep it. I, I'd rather have you than have the thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and sometimes you have this thing, it's an inheritance. You can't get it. There are certain things that you can't get until a certain date is passed. You, you have to earn a certain thing. But but God said you you don't have to you don't have to wait for this. I I, I already died for you. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. Yeah. He yeah. says, I already died. I already passed away. I already died and rose from the grave. You don't have to wait for it. You can access it right now. Mm. Thank you. Jesus. You see, you can call on Jesus right now and he will answer you. Hallelujah. You can call on the name of the Lord right now and you can get help right now. Praise God. You, you can call. The Bible says, for it, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved right now, right here. The power is accessible. The power is there for you. The power is here for us, brothers and sisters. Accessible. Praise God. Accessible. Huh? Accessible. 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 At one time we used to have to go through, uh, we, we used to have to go through routines. We used to have to go through priests. Yeah. But no, we don't have to go through priests. We mm -hmm. have a great high priest. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. At, at one time we had to be grafted and we have to change religions because we were Jew, we weren't Jews, we were Gentiles, and, and we were cut off. We were cut off from the from the uh, uh, from the covenant of God. We we had to be converted and then we had to be uh, circumcised physically uh, to get into the covenant of God. And even so, we were we were still not of the read of, 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 of the DNA of, of, of Abraham, but, but, but now I have access because, because Jesus, uh, he, he uh, rent the veil, he tore the veil from top to bottom and, and he went into the holies of holies himself and he presented his own blood uh, as the spotless lamb, uh, a sacrifice that was accepted of God uh, and Jesus says here is my own blood uh, on their behalf uh, and I want you to accept my own blood uh, for somebody called Kevin Gordon. I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm. I want you to accept my own blood uh, for somebody called Sharon, uh, for somebody mm -hmm. called Elsa, for mm -hmm. somebody called Gloria. I want you to accept my own blood uh, so that they can have access uh, and now the Bible says uh, let us come boldly young mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. To the Amen. throne of grace. I, I don't need to. I don't need to go through him and her and I don't need help and I don't need anybody to do. I can come boldly to the throne of grace uh, so that I can Amen. find help from my father when I need it. Amen. I have access. Amen. Middle wall of separation is torn down. It's broken down. It's destroyed and we have access. It's accessible right now. It's on the inside. It's accessible right now. The final point I want to make, point number three, is that, you know, the enemy, the problem that we have sometimes is that <clears throat> sometimes we try to do certain things. I'm going to cut it short. Sometimes we, we try to do certain things in our own power. We, 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 have this, we have this tendency because as part of self-esteem, there are certain things in self-esteem system that, uh, Self-esteem includes the need to be, uh, I, you know, have an identity, the need to belong somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. and the need to accomplish some things. And, and it's that need that we have sometimes to accomplish certain things. And so mm -hmm. what Hell says is that I want you to try to do it for yourself. 
I, I want you to use what you have. I want you to use natural power to get yourself out of this situation. But, but, but God says, I want you to understand something. There's a difference between your giftings and your anointings. Hello. Amen. There's a difference between your ability uh, that I put in you. I gave you that ability. And there is a difference between what you can do with ability and what I can do through you, through the Holy Ghost in your life. Are you Amen. hearing what I'm saying to you? Your Amen. giftings will take you so far, but your anointing, the ability, you the anointing, it. the supernatural power that God gives you, that's the thing that takes you above the normal and the natural. Are you hearing what I'm what yeah. I'm saying to you and what what god is saying is i want you to recognize don't don't do it in your strength don't do it in your own self don't do it by yourself you can do it but it will only get you so far you can do it and it will only last for so long mm -hmm. but if you do it in the ability and in the strength and in the giftings of god in the anointings of god then it will last for a long time it will last for as long as you need it it will last because god's ability are not subject to attrition. Mm -hmm. They're not subject to wearing yeah. down. They're not subject to getting tired. They will last for eternity. And God is saying you can go about it two ways. Uh, you can go about it in the flesh, uh, but I want you to go about it in the spirit. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you uh, this afternoon? Uh, I'm about to close. I'm done right now. Uh, but let me just tell you a story about a man called Peter. Uh, Peter was a man who loved Jesus. Uh, he loved God. Uh, and he loved Jesus, uh, but Peter was working in his own ability. I know he was in his own ability because when he came to, when they came to arrest Jesus, uh, Peter grabbed his sword uh, and he cut off the man's ears. Uh, and Jesus mm -hmm. said, no, Peter, if you live yeah. by the natural, uh, you're going to die by the natural. Uh, mm -hmm. And Peter still didn't learn. Uh, he went there and Jesus said to Peter, uh, Peter, uh, uh, before the cock Throws across uh, three times. Uh, you're going to deny me, Peter, in his own strength and ability. He said, "No, Lord, uh, I will never deny thee." Uh, and the Bible tells me the cock crow three crow uh, 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 crowed three times, uh, and Peter denied Jesus, uh, and he went away full of sorrow because he was doing it in his own strength. Uh, oh my God! Uh, but then one day, uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, Lord help me. And there were in one place uh, and in one accord, the Bible says, uh, and there fell on them uh, cloven thongs as of fire, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, this same Peter that was afraid uh, uh, to own Jesus uh, and said, Jesus is mine. Uh, this same Peter got up uh, in front of all the Jews uh, and the Judaizers uh, and said, Men and brethren, uh, this mm -hmm. same Jesus that you crucified, uh, he shall return. Uh, and he mm -hmm. said, when he looked at them and he said, repent every one of you and be mm -hmm. baptized in the name of this Jesus uh, for the remission mm -hmm. of your sins. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying you can do it in your strength. Uh, you can do it yeah. in your abilities. Uh, you can do it in the natural. Uh, but it's better when you have the Holy Spirit uh, on the yes. inside working uh, yes. because you will run uh, and you will will not be weary. Mm. You will Amen. walk. God help me. Never fail. Amen. And you will Amen. never Amen. 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 Do it by the supernatural power. Do it by the strength of God. And I'm done. And I just want to tell you that what you want and what you need, you already have what you need on the inside. God says the power, the excellency of the power, which is of God, is deposited on the inside of you as a treasure that has been given to us. Already have it. I don't need it anymore. I don't need anything else along, along with what God has already given me. So valuable. God has given it to me. Praise God. And he's given it to you. Glory be to God. God bless you, church.